Figure it out. Hello, this is Adam Carlick with Flying and Eating. Today, let's go somewhere and do something. And make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Hey everyone, it's Adam here. On the last couple of Flying and Eating episodes, I went out to Tokyo, Japan. Uh, I've eaten a whole bunch of stuff, I've explored a whole bunch of areas, but today is going to be something special. Today, we're exploring something very personal to me, the area of Yokosuka, a place that is very significant to my favorite video game of all time, Shenmue, but I promise even if you're not into video games, you'll still enjoy. Ohayou gozaimasu. Uh, so today, today's going to be a big adventure day. We're actually going a little bit of sightseeing. Yes, I promised it somewhat, and you'll finally get a bit of that. Before we get to that, though, before we go where we're going. Breakfast of Champions. We got, of course, a black coffee. Uh, we also have this from uh, 7-Eleven. It's a rice bowl, pork, and egg. Uh, so you actually have the option if you want to to have them heat this up. Sometimes they'll ask you, sometimes they won't. Uh, in I think if you were to, I mean, again, I don't speak Japanese, but I think if you were to say something like uh, Hatsui Kudasai, hot, hot like hot, <laughs> and uh, Kudasai meaning please, they probably would understand that you want them to microwave this. Most 7-Elevens will do that for you, or convenience stores will do that for you. In my case, I'm not going to bother because I have a microwave back at the hotel, but uh, it's basically just, as you can see, it's like pork and rice and egg, just like it says, uh, and it should be just a decent little breakfast for 550 yen, which currently is like $3 or something. So I've arrived. I am now at a place called Yokosuka. Now, I've been to Yokosuka many times. Um, there's a lot of stories there, but the long story short with that is why am I in Yokosuka? What's interesting about it? My favorite video game franchise of all time takes place here. So the interesting thing about this area of Japan, of Yokosuka specifically, is that it is basically a fusion of both American and Japanese cultures. And the reason for that is the U.S. naval base is here. It's like our primary base for the Pacific outside of Guam itself. And uh, it's got kind of a fascinating history. Like, uh, obviously, it predates World War II. Before that, it was a big base that the Japanese themselves used. But of course the war ended with an American victory and we took it over more or less to initially just kind of demilitarize the country. And then over time, it was to essentially, uh, you know, just have a foothold there in case, you know, activities from the Soviet Union were increasing. And contrary to the rumors you've heard, the straight up lies, um, about the idea that America kind of conquered this and it just kind of stays against the will. Uh, that is not the case. Um, for the longest time, it was kind of a... It, that was true initially, um, but then it really, really softened to the point where the United States was getting kind of tired of being here because we entered into a security agreement with Japan. Basically, anyone attacks Japan, that's considered an attack on the United States. And... So we were responsible for Japan's defense, which was fine with us. We had no issues with that. Um, but over time, it was kind of like, well, the Soviet Union collapsed. You know, what are we still doing this for? Uh, and it was actually under the Obama administration. They were like, okay, we're going to pull out. Uh, there's really no reason to be there anymore. Um, and the Japanese said, no, 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 you can't leave. Uh, because having the Americans here has been awesome for them. Uh, they basically get a huge security agreement. Uh, they get a huge security agreement without really having to do much of anything. Uh, having being on Uncle Sam's good side is not a bad thing. So uh, they started paying us to stay. And under the Trump administration, that actually got more in, in extreme. They started paying a lot more. And under the Biden administration, the same thing. So contrary to what you've heard online, we are not occupiers. They, they keep us here and pay us to stay. As you wander this area more, you'll see more and more names like St. Joseph's Hospital, which clearly very American inspired. More and more English will pop up on things, uh, especially in the area we're coming up to, because I'll show you what I can of the base, uh, but I've spent a lot of time over here. I know this area rather well. Uh, I have a buddy of mine who's military and when he was, you know, when he's around, he's like, oh, we can, you know, go, you know, go to stuff, I can go to the base, whatever. Unfortunately, he's currently in Korea, so I can't see him. But otherwise, I would have shown you guys the base itself. But you'll notice more and more of the locations are in English uh, because this whole area is really kind of meant for uh, American sailors to just spend their time. So they live on the American side of the border, but on this side is frankly where everything interesting is. <laughs> and I can tell you that as someone who's actually been to the American side, it's 
it's like being in the suburbs. It's, it's not that interesting. The more and more you walk around here, you'll see stuff that's named after Americans like Club 54, The Fort. You know, the, the Japanese language starts to kind of fade away a little bit. It's, it's very fascinating. Um, now up here, uh, to anyone who's ever played the Shenmue games, you can see, of course, the U.S. flag there, because again, this is, it becomes more and more Americanized the closer and closer you get. If you look at the little, like, street sign things, check it out, they have stars, because they're basically meant to represent <laughs> the American flag. Because, like, while this part is not part of the United States, it's basically, we're right at the edge. New Hotel Yokosuka, I've actually stayed there before. Um, very nice hotel. This is also a part of Japan where wherever you go, everyone inside these restaurants is gonna speak English. No problem. It's basically a Disneyland type of vibe. Look, our flag is there, Japanese flag is there. But one of the coolest things about it is it shows like how much the two cultures really get along now. I mean, this is, this is one of the hearts of American military power and like one of the hearts of Japanese cultural power and they come together and everybody gets along. Everybody has a good time. We have fun, you know? This is a nice place. See that white fence at the end? That's the border. You get it? <laughs> but over here we have the 7-Eleven if you're a Shenmue fan. This is what the Tomato Mart was based on, is this particular location right here. Uh, yeah, very cool. It's actually funny. Um, so throughout this, this series, you may not have seen too many Japanese flags. The thing is the Japanese don't actually put their flag up all that much. Um, this area is where you're going to see it more commonly just because it's basically a border with another country, essentially. Uh, hence that. Because Japan, of course, doesn't border any other countries. The only one you can even argue they kind of border is the United States just because of the bases. Uh, Yokosuka souvenir shops. So in here is a lot of touristy stuff. Um, in my, and again, my favorite game, uh, they were given away like prizes and stuff. And you would uh, be able to get them in there. It's pretty cool. Now here we are on Dabuita Street. This is uh, the primary street in which the game I'm talking about takes place. And uh, so it's, it's, super, it's super cool being on this street. It's actually funny, the first time I was ever here, ever, um, I came here completely by accident. <laughs> uh, basically, I was coming to hang out with my buddy, the one who I said was military, but I had no idea where he was going to be. And once I land, I got an address and I went to it, not realizing I was going to, oh man, the place where my game takes place. This is a place called Tsunami Burger. Uh, this place is really cool. I've eaten here before. And you can see they have various burgers. They have the Seventh Fleet Burger, the George W. Bush Burger, the Obama Burger, the Trump Burger. There is a Biden Burger, although they don't seem to have any mention of it. I do know it exists based online. Um, this, if you ever saw the meme of that guy who's eating a burger that's so big, they swap it out with his head. I'll show it. This is where that comes from. This is this is where it's from. Adam Corlick. Yes. <laughs> Hello. Hi. Hi. <laughs> What's up, man? So here's a coincidence. You guys saw that. This is Alex. Apparently, I was on his podcast like how many years ago? Like, like eight like, years ago. Yeah, easily. This was not planned. When you saw him just emerge in the footage, uh, yeah. that that was not. <laughs> We had no idea that was going to occur. So here, uh, if you ever played the game, this is a parking lot in which the main character, as you know, would just stand there and start training and start fighting people. Well, not fighting people, but yeah, he would just say like, yeah, I'm going to work on my moves. Let's get sweaty. <laughs> okay, we don't quite have that skill, but that's all right. There's also this uh, cool little shrine thing. I, I remember the story, I don't remember the full extent of this story, but I do remember this thing was actually here way before the war. Uh, and uh, everybody just wanted to keep it, so there it is. Very cool. Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. Um, anyway, we will proceed on our way here and walk down the rest of this street and see what else we can find. Um, you know, one thing I noticed about this area, again, because it's probably because it's partially American, um, is way more chill on the mask thing. Uh, yeah. I yeah. Think a lot of the Japanese are influenced by some of the Americans there. Oh, that, that would make sense. Yeah. But Oh, th this is your saloon. Yeah, it is. Yeah, that's pretty cool, actually. That's, that's why you're here. It all, this is a for business for you. I get it. <laughs> all right, that makes sense. U.S. goods. Um, yeah, you don't know. 
Vegas fashion. Oh yeah, this is where you can get those like fancy bomber jackets and stuff, like the, the yeah. Tiger one. I, I really wanted to buy a jacket, but they are very pricey. Yeah, the, the real ones are very, very expensive. Now, of course, the reason we care is the main character in Shenmue constantly walks around with one of these things. I'd say the closest one to compare it to would be that one, just because of the Tiger. Yeah, like the tiger. But yeah, yeah, it's, it's a nice jacket. Very cool. Yeah. You can see some nice vehicles. <laughs> this would be basically uh, Karita's jacket shop in the game. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there's, there's so many. Yeah, there's... I, no, wait, sorry, it's this one. It's the military one. Yeah, military yeah. surplus store. Uh, in the game, there's a character named... Uh, there's a store called, uh, I believe it's Karita's Jacket Shop. And this is the one that's based on. This guy is the one person in Yokosuka who seems to embrace the fact that his yeah. store is in Shenmue more than anybody. Um, I don't know if he still has it. Oh, he does. I can see it. Um, there is a little guide map right back there. This Shenmue guide maps because this place is based on Shen, uh, Shenmue's in it. Um, and you can just take those. I'm going to grab one real quick just to show you guys. Yeah, I'm just going to show them footage wise. But see? Yeah, there's English ones and there's Japanese ones. But this, the, the, uh, this store is actually in the game. And that's why these are here. Very cool. They have both English language and Japanese language. That's the newer one with the uh, the, the one and two art. There's actually the anime version too. So, so you didn't know you could actually get these here. Well, I, I knew that they are here, but I didn't know where to find them. And thanks for, for letting me. Know. Oh, no problem, dude. So, so yeah, this is a, this is a big deal. This is. I really wanted this. So. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm happy to help you out. Yeah. But if you're ever out here and you're a fan of the games and you want those, this dude's store is the only place that will like always have them. I got the I must. You saw that car, right? Like, how cool is that? So that's a perfect example of how this is a weird American-Japanese hybrid fusion place. That was a Japanese guy rolling like he's driving a car through the middle of Los Angeles, like, Big in a thing. Chevy car, too. Look, Batman. He Batman's here as well. Thing. West, Super. Coast, West Coast culture um, in mm -hmm. Japan. Yeah, makes sense. George's Country Bar. Ooh, we got Irish stuff. And of course, you see a lot of uh, military, not just American and Japanese. You'll actually end up with a lot of people from other countries that are part of that alliance structure uh, and other countries where, um, you know, they're just trying to improve relations and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, Australia and New Zealand yeah. too. Australia comes here, like those guys, actually, have you ever, you've been to the Yokosuka base, right? I haven't actually. Oh, um, what I was told about it is, uh, un, un, you know, you have to be either military or like someone has to approve of you. But the two the two countries that have the easiest time getting in is Americans, logically so, and the other ones is Australians. Yeah. Uh, every nation after that, it gets progressively harder. Um, but yeah, that that's a main street over there. Surf taco, Mexican food, Fuji. Oh yeah, the phone booth. Yeah, again, if you're into Shenmue, there's uh, a phone area where you would call up, you know, to get information. And there would be like a little old lady behind there. <laughs> yeah, and then you would call. And then after you get the call, you would walk around this corner and you'd wait right there for a bus. It would happen right there. Um, of course, in reality, there's no bus stop there, but yeah, yeah, there. it's inspired. It's inspired. Yeah. In the game, and this is all allegedly, uh, that there was a hot dog truck called Tom's Hot Dogs. When this place is called Snack Tom's and Tom and Jack's Bar, it's pretty obvious this was the source of inspiration, but it is only alleged. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, a lot of this is kind of missed on you if you haven't played the Shenmue games, but uh, as I was trying to say earlier, the first time I ever came here, everyone assumed I was like doing some sort of pilgrimage to my favorite, you know, game location. That actually wasn't the case. Um, my buddy from the one who's currently in Korea, he uh, was just like, yeah, here, come down here. And then I got here, and I was like, whoa, wait, we're in Yokosuka? I have a video, my favorite video game ever takes place here. He's like, really? Who would want to make a game based on this area? <laughs> and, uh, and then was, he's like, well, is there anything special you want to do? I was like, uh, is, I want to see Dubuita Street. Is that a real thing? And he's like, you're standing on it right now. What? <laughs> like, I'm on Mecca and I don't even know it? That was my first time here. It was 100% accidental. I was not supposed to be here. So in Shenmue, 
there's a big thing about going to vending machines and picking out drinks. And there's even a character who's constantly hitting up our main character, bothering him for money so that he'll buy him a drink. And I don't have any cash, so guess how this is playing out. <laughs> he's going to spot me money. I'm, I'm the bad character, and he's Rio. He's the one who's, fine, I'll buy you one. He's nice. I'm, I'm the annoying guy with a job who doesn't have money for some reason. That's the thing in the game. Only players of the game are going to get that. But seriously, thank you. What did we end up getting? We got, oh, uh, let's take a look. So this is a Georgia taste of cocoa or cacao, uh, Godiva. I'm assuming this is basically like a hot chocolate that's not hot. Right, it's cold. All right, well, obviously it's cold, yes. Yeah. But like that seems pretty good. Arigato gozaimasu. Good. <laughs> That's why I didn't try. They good. usually would toss the can at the end. Good. good. For the record, this was really good. It was basically just a, a cold hot chocolate. It was very, very flavorful, very, very nice. So this would be staircase similar to what Rio would have walked up yeah. all the time when going, you know, back home. Uh, at the end of the day. Very cool. I, I would run up it, but I mean, you guys have seen me. That's not gonna happen. So this is a really good Indian Japanese uh, restaurant uh, here in uh, Yokosuka in the Dubuita area. This one is great for a lot of reasons because it, it kind of combines the taste sensibilities, of course, of Indian food, but Japanese as well as American. This is one of the best Indian places I've ever had that wasn't in the UK. So we're walking over towards where the naval base is, or as close as we can get to it. It's interesting just walking along here and some of the subtleties you start noticing. Obviously you see a lot more Americans walking around, but you start, the language barrier starts to change. I've been noticing way more people just speaking English and uh, almost nobody speaking Japanese anymore. <laughs> interesting, interesting. So right here is a big mall, lots of cool stuff in there. That's actually a really nice Starbucks, I've been in there. One of the perks, I don't know if you've ever noticed, do you actually go to Starbucks? You ever, you ever go into one? Okay, you do. If you ever hang out at one of those long enough as a gaijin, they'll start giving you free little samples of stuff. You've noticed it? It is true. Okay, I want to see. I'm not crazy. He lives here and he can tell you that's true. The, the reason they do that is they basically use us as a test market. They're like, if gaijin like it, our people like it too. But if it sucks, who cares what gaijin think? <laughs> It's, yeah. it's, it seems like it's nice because it is, but at the same time, you're just a guinea pig. <laughs> yeah. It's also a uh, hospitality thing that Japanese like to, like to do called uh, omotenashi, and, uh, which means to be hospitable to you know, uh, guests. And I appreciate so, that because yeah. I quite enjoyed the random little almond whatever thing they made for me at one time. Oh, yeah. It was really good. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so here is Yokosuka Harbor. Uh, now, on this side, you can see over there, you can see some various ships. Those ships are not the American ones. Those are uh, Japanese ships out in the distance. I think that one's actually Canadian, it looks like. My, my eyes deceive me? Is that a Canadian ship in the distance? Yeah. Okay, so this, okay, the Canadians are in town. Um, yeah, I don't know what else is going on today, but you, you mentioned there's something, some sort of naval uh, thing happening. And uh, I think, honestly, there's a kind of a show of uh, joint uh, military exercises right now because of... Uh, of what's going on. Yeah, because of North <laughs> well, Korea and China. And, uh, yeah. We'll leave it at that, provoking. but yeah. 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 So, basically, all the Western allied countries. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, Canada's over there. I see them from here. I know. That, that explains why I think we saw, like, uh, the Filipino Navy earlier as well. Yeah. So, okay, that makes sense. Yeah. So the um, the American Navy base is actually right behind those that big pile of green trees and stuff back there. Uh, it was basically selected originally by the Japanese because of its like natural fortifications. But at the end of the war, um, we ended up with it, and we agreed it was a good fortified base area, and so it's still ours to this day. Uh, if my built my buddy in the military was here, uh, we'd be able to go over there and explore. It's an interesting little area. It's the second you cross that border, you definitely feel like you're back in the American suburbs. It doesn't feel like this place. I mean, down to the point where the outlets like have the triple ground, like they've got like everything. The only Dunkin' Donuts in Japan is on that side of the wall. 
it's but yeah it's straight up like like the whole logic was if you're here you're stationed here but you don't actually like the idea of being in japan you can stay there the whole time you'd always feel like you're in the american midwest basically but yeah very cool yeah, and you can see there's a lot of sailors. <laughs> yeah, a lot of sailors walking around. If you play Shenmue, you realize why that's hilarious, because they are not hard to find. As uh, Alex just pointed out, the Statue of Liberty is actually on top of a building over there, which is pretty cool. But it makes sense, because this side is Japan, and you can see right here, we got this barbed wire. On this side of the wall, like right there, is the United States of America. I'm now touching the United States of America right now, technically. Um, as weird as that is, I just touched home, even though <laughs> I'm in Japan. So if you, uh, unfortunately we're not eligible to do this, um, but if you are ever here, and you have someone who's eligible military, uh, you can actually go in through the visitor center here, and you would fill out forms, and then they basically let you in through there on the right, and then you can legally enter what is the United States of America. Though technically I think inside that building is the US, although it's the US in the same way like an airport zone is. But see this, this wall is the border. So you can freely come right back out, but you can't just walk in. Uh, you would need special clearance, which we do not have. In there, this just, I just remembered this. You know, you know Blockbuster, certainly. You remember Blockbuster? So there's, you know, there's one blockbuster left. It's one in Oregon. Okay? Bend, oh, Oregon. Yeah, I've heard about this. Yes, I, I've been to it. It doesn't even matter. I've shown that you guys watching the video. video. Thank you. Uh, you guys watching the video, you know about this. Yeah. There's actually technically two. There's that one. Do you know where the other one is? He's right! It's in there! Sort of. Inside there, there's a little grocery store called, like, Wisconsin Market or something like that. It's just really trying to play to the whole, like, you're in the Midwest type of thing. But in there, unless it's changed, because it was there a few years ago, there's like a little kiosk and it's just a whole bunch of DVDs with Blockbuster holders and technically you can rent them. And technically Dish Network got a cut of that because they're the parent company. So technically! At least there was. I don't know if it's still there. Second blockbuster beyond that border in the good old U.S. of A. So we're now inside the guest pass area. Now, if you were going to come in here, you'd have to have someone military, you know, authorize you, and then you can come in if you have tourist pass, residency card, that kind of stuff. It depends on all that. Um, also, shout out to the Canadians. We may be on American soil, but you donated the hand sanitizer. Good for you. So we're just leaving the American side. Now, as you know, as a Shenmue fan, when you're playing the game, our main character, Ryo Hazuki, he beats up a lot of the sailors, which, is, which are all our guys, by the way. It's all the American dudes. Sorry, we're kind of douchebags in that game. Anyway, so if you ever go to the American side, there's actually a naval hospital over there. And I always, when I saw it, I just thought, you know what's funny is all the guys in the game inevitably went to this building and got medical treatment after Rio whooped them. So we're coming up to a shrine here, and uh, they have a sign basically warning U.S. forces not to come here. Now, neither of us are, and as he pointed out, it's a pretty old sign. It might just be a thing where there used to be more rambunctious days where this was a problem, but now it's nothing. But up here, uh, again, our favorite game, this is kind of the inspiration for Rio's house is up at the top and just the general area in which he lives. These kind of traditional looking houses. Um, I actually did a video for Sega once, and I stood right here, and that was the backdrop. And I just talked about why Shenmue was so important to me and how, what a, you know, impact it had on gaming. It's right there. So Shall I? Feel free. <laughs> uh, Shenmue, uh, honestly, it opened up my my eyes, my mind, um, to Asia in general. Back when I was in junior high, uh, high school, early years of high school, I didn't know the difference naturally as a, as a young American. I didn't know the difference between China, Korea, Japan, any Asian countries. And then Shenmue came around and it kind of um, taught me the distinctions between the countries because Shenmue 1 was in Japan, Shenmue 2 was in China, and so I started to learn about different cultures and things like this. So that's why Shenmue was important to me. See, I'm not the only one. We're all crazy, but like awesome crazy. It changed our lives. Yes. It's an important game to all of us. So much so that 
we're actually out here visiting the sites that it's based on. Just by random coincidence, this dude lives here, second time he's I ever showing up. I had no idea. We had no clue. No idea. <laughs> no idea this is going to happen. Clue. See, I swear. And yeah. I'm, out of, I'm not even in the fan base scene active anymore. I just came here out of my own, just like, random thought. I'm, I'm going to go. I have free time. Hey, dude, it's not like I even tweeted out that I was going to be here. We just we just showed up. I'm telling you guys, Shenmue, there's a reason I love that game. It's every <laughs> single one of us. There's not a lot of us, we admit that. But those of us that are in it, we're all crazy in the best way. Yeah. So we walked up this giant thing. And, uh, yeah, this is basically the inspiration for the main character's house. And I apologize to those who are not super into video games. I hope you guys just like the the look of the the design of the whole place. But if you are at all into the video games, you should definitely check out Shenmue. My favorite game of all time. And if you're just into traveling, come out to Yokosuka, man. Like, it's obviously got a mix of the traditional historical Japanese stuff, but it's also got that mix of like Western culture, especially from the United States, just because we're all here. So this is a great training wheels area if you want to come to Japan. Because if you're like, oh man, I'm really scared about learning Japanese, you'll be okay over here. <laughs> you'll be okay. So Alex and I are gonna go here, Tsunami Burgers we're talking about before. We're gonna have to decide which burger we're getting, which president or which fleet, which army, or just whatever random thing we're gonna do. I don't really know, we'll go in there. And you get, when was the last time you had like a gigantic American burger? Was it like back at home or was yeah. it here? Yeah, it's back in the States. I've been here one time, it was very good. So kind of a good news, bad news situation here. The original location has shut down for the evening, but the second location, which they just built this, uh, apparently, is open. So we're uh, Alex is putting us down for two. Uh, Spider-Man is up there protecting us. Batman's here guarding the street. So you guys can see some of the examples of what the burgers look like. These are the wax ones. That is called the Seventh Fleet Burger. That is a real thing. That is ridiculous. So we've got the burger menu out, and uh, we're not crazy enough to try the Seventh Fleet Burger, which is 7,656 yen. No thank you. But also we would, you know, die. Look at this thing, it's insane. But um, I'm, uh, so Alex is going with the GW Burger. The Texas, don't mess with Texas Burger. And uh, folks, I'm having the uh, the Obama Burger. That way it's balanced out, I don't want it's left and right, and we're not political, we just think these burgers look good. I'm sorry, the Trump Burger looks like a disgusting mess and so does the Biden Burger. It is not a political decision. I've had the Obama bur Burger before, I know it's good. And he's. Got, I think you've had the GW Burger, but we're trying to make everybody happy here. If you come here though, and you're thinking like, I don't want a burger, they got a bunch of stuff. We got Aussie fries, mate. And we've got truffle cheese, french fries, we got all sorts of stuff, uh, buffalo wings. It's very Americana, but also we got Mexican inspired Americana with taco rice, and it's weird fusion of Japanese American concepts. It's great, lots of good stuff in here. Highly recommended. No burger, no life. Thank you, that is right. Our burgers have arrived. This is the GW burger, look at that. Right there, the big egg. This is the first burger with a president on it, I think. At least from here, obviously. So what else you got? You got bacon, you got egg, you got burger, cheese, lettuce, onions it looks like. Yeah. Obviously the bun. All the essentials. Basically vegetarian. Vegetarian. <laughs> Very veg the vegan burger the for vegan. sure. I got the Obama burger, which is some sort of macadamia nut bread. Um, uh, onions, uh, grilled onions, some sort of more bacon. We got some sort of sauce. I don't even remember. Obviously the meat patty, lettuce, tomato. Whew. It's uh, it's intense. I think they. I kind of remember they used to put a curry in the middle, but I think they don't do that anymore. What did you think of your GW burger? Uh, it was very good. You know, it actually tasted very American. Um, in Japan, uh, they use a little bit more um, fatty meat, and in America, I think we use more lean, and they use more lean, in my opinion. So that's pretty good analysis. I wouldn't have said that. I was like, it's good. No, mine was great. It was, he's right. The burger was like the patty itself wasn't actually all that thick, but it was nice. Um, it was the onions that really made it so thick, the grilled onions. But that was a really tasty burger, man. I mean, I already knew this going in because I've been there before. But Tsunami Burger, you're down here. Definitely check it out. And that'll do it. Thank you for watching part three. Please stay tuned to part four. We're going to be doing a bunch of shopping. Uh, we're going to eat a bunch of stuff. And uh, we're going back to Yokosuka. Only briefly. Like, that's not the bulk of the video. You'll see. There's a whole bunch of crazy stuff that happens in the next one. Thank you very much for watching. As always, please like, comment, subscribe. Follow me on all the social media stuff in the description. Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, Discord, Patreon, etc. Thank you so much for the support. And I'll see you all later.